All right, well, thanks, everybody. Um, this is a little talk uh, about uh, the lessons I've learned as a surgeon entrepreneur. I think we hopefully have a lot of, or at least a few, budding entrepreneurs in the audience, and uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about that. Uh, my name is David Kirschman. I'm actually a neurosurgeon. Um, and you might be asking, well, what's a neurosurgeon doing in front of a room of orthopedic surgeons? Well, we're, we're not here to talk about the head bone. We're here to talk about... <laughs> Uh, you know, surgeon entrepreneurship. First of all, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, DeCook, Charlie, um, and the Anterior Hip Foundation. Appreciate the invitation. Um, you know, I was at another conference last week and I asked um, a bunch of guys about, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this presentation for uh, Charlie DeCook. And, uh, and everyone said the same thing. He's like, oh yeah, that's the, that's the 12 by 12 guy. And I was like, 12 by 12, what the heck, what, what is that? And they're like, oh yeah, 12 cases by noon. And I was like, 12 cases by noon? I mean, when I was in private practice, you know, 12 by 12 meant like 12 cases done by the 12th of the month. <laughs> that was 12 by 12 for us. But our goals here um, are to talk about the importance of surgeon entrepreneurship, what I've learned from my various ventures, and hopefully inspire any budding entrepreneurs uh, in the audience here. So, um, a, a little bit about me. Um, I finished my neurosurgery residency in 2002. I entered private practice in Dayton, Ohio. Um, and um, when I was in practice as a young, unknown guy, I invented a new type of cervical plate, uh, which was a zero-step locking mechanism. Um, it formed a basis for a full line of spinal implants. And I did what a lot of guys do. I showed it around to all the different companies and they were like, well, who the hell are you? You're some kid from Dayton, Ohio. What, you know, you don't know anything. Um, so I said, well, okay, well, then I'll just start my own company. And I have a company called Xbind Systems. And um, I partnered with a manufacturer investor, uh, a golf course uh, buddy. Um, at, uh, and, uh, we, um, and we took over the company. Uh, we started the company. I took over the company full time in 2006. I had no business training. It was just like any, my degree was in biological sciences. I went straight to medical school. I had no background in business. I didn't come from a business family. My father was a physician. Um, but we managed to, <laughs> I managed to learn in the school of hard knocks and we uh, grew the company um, over about nine years, 10 years and um, sold the company in um, 2015 for 86 million. And uh, at that point, um, you know, I decided to, well, you know, maybe I should retire or whatever, and I, I exited practice, um, but I was kind of bored with that, so I decided to make a couple of other runs at some other companies. Um, those include recently Surgifor, which you might be familiar, which uh, um, is a, um, a betadine-based uh, surgical irrigation. We just sold that uh, recently to Becton Dickinson. Um, I'm also currently running a company called Aerobiotics LLC, um, which is a, um, which is a uh, surgical uh, air system to produce the incidence of surgical site infection. Um, and that company has been growing uh, quite well. Uh, I've also, I'm also the director of the Entrepreneurs Center in Ohio, which is a public-private partnership working with over 80 Ohio portfolio, portfolio companies um, from aerospace to consumer products, so everything. <laughs> and uh, I have additional ventures in biomaterials, digital health, diagnostics, infection prevention, and of course, environment of care. So I'm gonna give one slide, one slide. I don't, want, I don't want this to turn into a commercial, but this is the aerobiotic system. You can see it right there in the background. Uh, it uh, is an ultraviolet system, completely data-driven, completely wired, completely part of the OR of uh, tomorrow, and reduces the level of contamination in the OR by about 70%, reduces the risk of surgical site infections, has about 12 peer-reviewed articles supporting all this uh, in major literature, and I'll be happy to talk to you about it. But I don't want to give you a commercial, so we'll move on. Um, what is an entrepreneur? Make sure I'm on time here. One who identifies a need and starts a business to fill that void, organizes, manages, and assumes the risks of the business. Why is it important? Because it is a criti critical creator of wealth in a free market economy. Last year, healthcare M&A rose 44% to $440 billion while the deal volume increased 16%. It is a source of important innovations which benefit humanity, it's an important source of employment, and it empowers independent thinkers and inventors 
who would not succeed in traditional companies. Why entrepreneurship is important for physicians specifically and for all of us. Well, a lot of people don't know that of the giant $3.8 trillion pie of the healthcare economy, physician services only represent 14.9% of that. And actually, that number is going down. I actually redid these slides and found that it was, the last time I presented this, it was 17% a couple of years ago. And I was like, I better go back and look at that slide again. And actually now it's down to 14.9 cents. The, the allocation of physician services continues to decline as a share of the overall healthcare budget. Diversification of income, our income, is as important as diversification of investment. Everyone diversifies their investment portfolio, don't they? You have stocks and bonds and maybe some real estate and maybe some other things. But your investment in yourself is just as important. You need to diversify yourself just like you diversify your investments. The ability to earn equity and build value outside of your direct services is critical. There's been a massive economic shift away from physicians, and this is just one example. In 2005, a hospital CEO earned about three times more than an orthopedic surgeon. More recent data, hospital CEOs for a nonprofit, large nonprofit centers earn five times more than an orthopedic surgeon. And I haven't seen the new data, but I'm sure it's worse. <laughs> it's probably up to seven or eight times. Mean uh, hospital CEO compensation right now is a little over $3 million annually. You're worth more than your own two hands. Create value that endures without your physical presence. Okay. Well, physicians should be the ideal entrepreneurs, right? Educated, hardworking, driven. As medical practitioners, we have the best insights into our $3.8 trillion industry, right? We use the medical devices. We prescribe the medications. We deal with the administration and delivery of care on a daily basis. However, if you look at the leaders of the top 10 orthopedic companies, and Hey, no, nothing personal against any of the wonderful people in the orthopedic companies. I love you guys. Only one has any sort of scientific training, and zero have any sort of clinical training. Finance, accounting, administration, management, finance, finance. That's what these companies are all about. You have to look no further than the leaders that, that are present. So what are the barriers to success for surgeon entrepreneurs? Well, why isn't everybody kind of doing this? One, lack of business training and medical education, and that's no accident. Keeping you ignorant and working, hey, that's great for the system. Too busy with clinical responsibilities. You know, if you're running on the treadmill, just trying to get as many cases in to keep your head above water and to pay your bills, you don't really have the time to think about this. Risk aversion. We're trained as surgeons to be risk averse. Our job is to avoid complications, not seek <laughs> complications. And they, this is a complication in your life. Go it alone attitude. You know, when we're there operating, hey, we, we understand, and we're the only ones who stand, understand that we are alone. You know, when there's bleeding, when there's a problem, it's you're, you're, you're there and you're naked. No one else is coming to help you. So we have to have that go-it-alone attitude. We've sort of learned not to depend on others when the chips are down. We have limited contacts and mentors. We don't necessarily know a lot of people who've done this kind of stuff. And we might not have the money or at least the liquidity to start, to start a business. But there's also unfair barriers to physician's entry, okay? Number one, HCA. <laughs> Prohibition on physician-owned vendors, a very significant problem. As a matter of fact, this specific issue is why I had to turn my medical license off. I had to go to the state of Ohio and tell them that I'm retiring my medical license in order so that my company could sell products to HCA hospitals. How about that? Federal disclosure requirements, Sunshine Act, 
Only applies to people with a, some, with a medical license. Anyone else, anyone else, any other fool who sells a product, they can do it freely. But a physician, they have specific requirements. Conflicts of interest, real and perceived. Well, you bring your own product into your own hospital, well, they're going to look at you with a side eye. Prejudice in the business community. You don't know anything about business. You're a doctor. Keep operating. The constraints of practice, clinical and financial. Hey, we're busy. Nonetheless, there have been successes. I won't get into detail, too much detail. Fred Moll, Gary Michelson, uh, Dr. Soon. Huge, huge, huge successes. Multi-billion dollar successes are out there. So, you want to become an entrepreneur, you want to try this stuff, well, you have to first start by making the time. And my recommendation is this. Number one, schedule one half day per week. Put it in your schedule. Schedule it in, one half day per week, to work on ideas, inventions, and non-practice pursuits. Eventually, taking that half day up to one day a week, and a day and a half a week. Form an LLC to hold intellectual property, contracts, equipment, computers. My LLC is called Inventive Dynamics LLC, and, you know, and it's a great repository for all this stuff. And it's also great for taxation. Look at this as a type of investment. This is an investment, just like you invest in any other company, but you're investing in something better, you're investing in yourself. Keep records of everything, get a good patent attorney. Everything is patentable, including business models. Don't forget that. Best part about all this, it's tax deductible. That's the only break you get on this deal. It is tax deductible. So one thing about surgeons, we pay a lot of taxes because uh, a practitioner who's working, delivering a service, doesn't necessarily have a lot of deductions. You're making a decent amount of money, but you don't have a lot of deductions. Well, this is all tax deductible. So a lot of times when I first started my LLC, I had huge tax benefits. There was a couple of years that I didn't even pay taxes because I was putting so much money into the LLC, into the inventions and those sorts of things. I'd rather give it to myself than the government. So we have a lot of the speakers here have been talking about, well, what's the idea? What's the idea? And, you know, <laughs> you, know you look at that, you know, uh, you can look at that little cartoon there and it says it all. Um, you know, you have to have, as other people have said, you have to have a value proposition. You have to show how it benefits the user, how it benefits the customer, how it benefits the hospital, how it benefits the patient, how it benefits the healthcare system. Show the value. If you don't have that, then you have a problem. Three Ds, device, drug, delivery. Those are the sorts of things that are the vast majority of the types of products that are exited every year. Is it novel? Is it affordable? Is it approvable? The FDA, we've, we've heard about that. Will it save time, money, and complexity? Is there a strong market? Please don't invent another retractor, okay? The world does not need another retractor. No one ever made money on a retractor, okay? I don't care how great it is. It could be the fantastic, greatest retractor in the world. <laughs> and um, leverage you. <laughs> it's about your value and execution. This is controversial, but I believe it. People are more valuable than ideas. You are the important part of your idea, not the idea. Okay? The million dollar napkin sketch is a myth. I've seen <laughs> zillions of them. None of them ever amounted to anything. Your knowledge, relationships, and hard work are where the value lies. An average idea with great execution will always beat a great idea with poor execution. That is corporate America in a nutshell, <laughs> right? Most great companies had modest concepts, but with great realization, just like Amazon on that napkin. The plunge, it's not for everyone. It'll take twice as long, cost four times as much. Your wife has to, or spouse, has to support you. And, you know, that is really important. You have to overcome your risk aversion and have faith. Have faith that... It will work out, and don't give up. It's a game of survival. It's a battle of attrition, okay? Financing. Lack of financing is the number one cause of failure. It will take twice as much time as you think and the money you think squared. 
You have to partner with someone who brings expertise as well as finance, and that could be angel investors, professional investors. Bank loans, no, because you have to first prove you don't need it. And again, it's all tax deductible. Here's a big one. This one I think is a big one, and, and not everyone believes in it, but I do. Don't go it alone. Don't go it alone, all right? Very few ventures succeed on the labors of one person. Half of something is better than all of nothing, <laughs> all right? Just like uh, Wozniak and Jobs right there. Neither of those guys could have done it alone. You had your brilliant salesperson, you had your genius engineer, but they needed to be together. Each one of them alone would not have been successful. Physicians must overcome their go-to-alone personality. Partners, mentors, bring critical money, time, and know-how. And that's exactly what I did. When I started my first company, I didn't do it myself. I had to give half of it away to a manufacturer of my product who I talked into investing with me in building the product. And that made all the difference in the world because they had what I didn't have and I had what they didn't have. Be careful about going to the big companies. And again, I love you, but big companies want you cutting and not competing. All right? They want you cutting and not competing. All right? Use care when approaching established companies with your ideas. There's been dramatic cuts in R&D in a lot of the big ortho companies. They are sales and marketing engines. Your chance of success is very low when you bring them your idea. You have to beware of sham royalties and payments. I was in the spine business, and this was rampant. You know, uh, fortunately, it doesn't, it's not quite as big of a problem anymore, but it's still out there. Companies want to buy fully realized products, not concepts, okay? And when we sell a company today, uh, when we're working with uh, innovation, we need to have a fully realized product, at least at the FDA imminent approval clear or clearance stage or later, you know, um, before anyone's really interested in it. And when it comes to acquiring, when it comes to selling your company or selling your business or a liquidity event, money is cheap, risk is expensive, okay? When I'm Zimmer or Stryker or Depew or whoever and I'm buying a company, I would rather pay more than take a risk, <laughs> much more. Money is cheap to these folks. Risk is what's expensive. How are we doing on time? Yeah, not too bad. So the end game. What's your end game? You've had your great idea. You've done your thing. Exit to a strategic acquirer or a private equity investor. Maybe go public. Career evolution with ongoing management. Change your career. You know, run a company. It can be <laughs> fun. It can not be fun. It can be challenging. Uh, bring in others to run and grow the business or turn into passive income and royalties or other streams. Those are the great end games that we all look for. And of course, there's always fail and try again. And not everyone gets it right the first time, not everyone gets it right the third time. But the main thing is to be out there and keep trying, and at the end of the day, we're trying to improve the lives of our patients, we're trying to advance our economy, we're trying to do all the right things that matter um, and, you know, and that's what I would hope to inspire maybe some of you uh, to do. And um, at the end of the day, uh, I'd like to thank everybody. And um, if there's any questions, hopefully we stay, I don't want to eat into your coffee break too much. And, uh, you know, and uh, I'm happy to talk to any one of you if you have any questions.